Aloha, and welcome to another episode of Security Matters hosted by Sea Arise. We'd like to start off by thanking Andrew Lanning for loaning us the microphone again today. I'm Tommy Zarna, and I'll be your host. Today, we're joined with industry experts to discuss innovation in the security industry and the future of the security industry. With us today, we have Ann Arwen from OpenPath, Chris Fazzoli from Securitas, Daniel Forrest from iForce, Dan Devin Love from Allegion. Once again, guys, thank you all for being on the show today. All right, we have a full show today, so let's go ahead and jump in. And I want to start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how OpenPath has adapted to the evolving needs of the security industry. Yeah, hey, thanks so much for having me. Um, we've definitely had to innovate uh, faster since the needs are changing faster than ever before during um, you know, this pandemic. So because we're a cloud-based system, we're able to make over-the-air updates. When we went into lockdown, um, previously we had touch to unlock at a time when uh, we went into lockdown, then no one wanted to touch anything. So um, that weekend, we were able to write new firmware updates and then roll out um, those new firmware updates over the air and had a huge uh, success and launch, um, launching our wave to unlock technology. So um, that's been a huge success. And because of those over the air updates that we're able to do, We've been able to adapt and quickly roll out other innovative features uh, as the needs have changed, such as uh, wealth, wellness and safety checks, um, occupancy management, uh, of course, uh, remote management, and um, of course, you know, flexible office um, installations as well. So as they have always changed, you can do um, hybrid or installations or uh, a straight rip and replace. Um, but the biggest announcement we had uh, recently was our new video reader, too, uh, where you're able to see both the access and the video um, as the access event is happening. And you can do that right from your home. Um, Chris, what are you seeing out there? Well, I appreciate it. Again, thanks, Tommy, for having us. Um, I think uh, we're, you know, to echo what you said, we're looking at uh, kind of unprecedented times. So looking at uh, uh, solutions like Open Path, which gives you the ability uh, to have some touchless entry and some of the, the feature sets that are available there. I think, um, you know, from our perspective, we're trying to stay as connected to our customers as possible right now. And, and I think that's a, it's a different landscape, right? Because a lot of it's done remotely and um, I think understanding and evaluating their needs, um, you know, working with our vendors to understand what the new and latest and greatest stuff is available um, and, and giving, providing our feedback uh, to these guys, ensuring that uh, we can either develop a solution or work around some of those, those constraints. Um, and we're noticing too, with the improvement with technology, we've got uh, some primary needs that we're always focused on trying to solve first, but with, as technology improves, you know, we're, we're at least uh, actually trying to, to solve some of those secondary needs as well, uh, which has really been great, especially with some of the feature sets that you just mentioned. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll pass it over to uh, Daniel. Yeah, so I mean, uh, the very definition of our business is remote guarding. So uh, we were kind of uh, ready set for uh, what's what's happening in our industry, which people are trying to get, uh, you know, less less exposure people on site. And so we're able to replace guards and utilize these technologies that uh, people like Open Path and others are coming out with where we can uh, basically do what physical guards were doing on site remotely, which at the same time saves a lot of people uh, money. Uh, and if they're if they're going through hard times with with certain things. And so uh, it, it's kind of been a, 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 a good spot to be in, in from our sector in the remote guarding world. All right. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Uh, Devin, let's finish this question up with you. Um, how has uh, Allegiant adapted uh, over the last 18 months? Yeah, Allegiant and, you know, particularly uh, my part of the portfolio, commercial electronics uh, within Schleg Lock, you know, the focus really has come down to how do we make this simple for our customers but we make it flexible for our partners. And we recognize that both customers and partners had to move very quickly. And so sometimes simplicity and flexibility can be at odds, but I think you know, we found a way to really thread that needle and make sure that we're able to provide that flexibility to customers and to our partners and make sure that it's simple where it needs to be simple. So really, um, helps offer something that can be unique which with every single niche that a different customer might provide 
through the, the door locks that let's be honest, right? It takes time to put those locks out there. So we really wanna make the most of what's already in the market. Yeah, perfect. Now I think we're seeing from, you know, all the companies represented on this call today, um, we're seeing the, the flexible offerings, integrating multiple technologies into one and, and really making life simpler and being more connected uh, to our clients. So um, that's definitely something that uh, we've all seen uh, over the last uh, two years, 18 months or so. Um, Daniel, I'll pass this question over to you. Um, you mentioned remote services, remote guarding specifically. Um, you know, we are seeing a rise in, in product offerings from companies who historically are, are moving to the maybe a SaaS model or are offering different uh, options to their clients. Um, what is iForce doing around remote services specifically? What are you seeing in the industry? Yes. Yeah, so a lot of, a lot of what's going on right now is, is trying to replace uh, people at, at gates and doors. So you see distribution centers and you see uh, 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 things where you can put in a remote call box and, and have access control with that uh, call box. And, and we're really able to offer a service that allows for uh, basically replacing that, that human at a gate and, and facilitating uh, flow through, through people's businesses. I think that's the biggest thing that we're seeing uh, with, with, with what's going on. And Devin, uh, over to you, what are you seeing on your side? Yeah, so when um, you know we look at SaaS offerings, particularly you know, so we we build our solutions um, with SaaS in mind, right? To be able to uh, always update and build on that relationship that exists. I think you know, that's core to the model. Is you can't just uh, fire and forget. You have to make sure that you're continually improving that product. But where we find it to be most uh, you know helpful is to again take that partnership point of view recognize um, how they're innovating, how they're changing their offering, and make sure that we're giving enough depth to our uh, integration surfaces to allow for something really special um, you know, to take place. Uh, I'll actually point out you know, OpenPath as a great example, um, integrating to our uh, Bluetooth locks, you know, it's not enough just to make it uh, functional. You know, really have to take that next step and uh, rapid unlock. I think you can uh, to go to the Allegiant integration page on OpenPath site. Uh, phenomenal use of an integration surface there. And, and again, right, making sure that taking that SaaS approach that it's not good enough just to uh, have it out first. You have to continue to hone that focus, make it something that you know truly the, the customer is going to enjoy. And I think that's a great um, example of doing exactly that, making sure that uh, by providing those differences and, and uh, going deep, you're able to have a solution that stands kind of head and shoulders above um, just getting it done for functionality sake. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Chris, uh, same question to you. Um, you have some experience on the remote guarding side as well. Um, how have you seen the, the products offerings change and differ uh, based on the current climate we're in? Well, I mean, definitely cost and labor are, are the, you know, is, is, is something that's going to be very impactful and it's going to make uh, the industry change, the environment change. Um, you know, and, and we want to make sure that uh, we kind of combine the, the feasibility of the technology with the good service, good customer experience. So we've definitely taken note of a lot of new technologies out there, really considering the end user, the, the interfaces that the end user has the control over what they have. Um, noticing a lot of the older technologies is very enterprise oriented, engineer oriented. Uh, now you can see that a lot of the things that are available are, are definitely more user friendly. And we've definitely looked at adopting um, a lot of different technologies where you've got the, the software as a service, security as a service, obviously remote guarding is, is uh, our, our big push, right? But technologies made us, uh, are given us the capability to provide more in depth, better service than we ever had before at a reasonable cost. And it comes with the connectivity, and the feature sets that allow us to be like we're virtually on site um, versus uh, what we have in the past where, you know, we don't really have those eyes and ears. Um, so it, it's definitely made that possible. So we're, we're always exploring new, better technologies, but, um, you know, I'm I definitely looking at an open path. I'll pass it over to Anne and see if, um, you know, she can comment on that. Uh, yeah. Hey, thanks, Chris. Um, so at open path, uh, you know, we've always designed our solution to uh, reduce friction and dependency on being on site or on premise. And that's 
since the very beginning. So uh, we had remote unlock and guest passes even prior to COVID. And then in more recent years, we've launched uh, further integrations uh, to enhance the experience uh, with some of our technology partners uh, like Cisco Meraki and other VMS providers uh, to marry that video and access control to allow you to drop in and see exactly what's happening on the ground with remote management capabilities and the dashboard to take the appropriate steps um, as required. Yeah, perfect. No, we are seeing um, a lot of clients that are really driving our own innovation. So um, I see the industry changing slightly from more of an outside in uh, approach where you know, clients are asking for a lot of things and, and companies are having to quickly adapt to the needs of our clients. And I think we've all said this, that all of our products, all of our offerings have really been with the client's needs first, um, whether that hasn't always been uh, the case in the industry. So, you know, continuing on the last question, um, we've seen a dramatic rise in, in SaaS product offerings um, over the past several years, really. And Devin, you touched on this a little bit um, with Allegion and, and the Slage Locks. Um, what are y'all seeing as far as SaaS? Where is SaaS going in the future? Yeah, I think it's uh, an exciting time, certainly in the last couple of years now, right? Everything has been drastically accelerated. And I think that's a good thing. There's a, there's a big silver lining to um, some pretty tough years here, uh, in particular with our products. And, uh, you know, the rise of both remote uh, operation and SaaS offerings, we see that what was uh, sort of result, reserved for just the perimeter is now making its way deeper and deeper into the building. And we really see our products as, you know, really the arms and the ability to reach out and touch the world and interact with it. That uh, again, is, is instigated by these uh, pieces of software that can do you know, some pretty remarkable things. And so again, that drives us to always want to look towards those partnerships and drive our products to more and more doors because they're seeing that you know, it's, it's not enough to have it just on the perimeter. They really want to see a comprehensive solution across their building so that they can have these you know, new, different, better experiences. Um, and then it all boils down to trust, really. You know, I think working more remote, um, working across additional doors on uh, multiple sites at one time. I think, uh, you know, I look back to what this looks like in the, uh, the smart home maybe 10 years ago, right? Uh, you may not trust to uh, open or close your garage door when you're not away from home. Um, yeah, I think ultimately, if, if you expect to be able to work these devices remotely, operate your buildings remote and, and through SaaS solutions, you have to focus on that quality and trust of the integrations of the products themselves. And so we've really been doubling down on that and focusing on um, getting each individual integration, each individual product right. Uh, and from the open path side, uh, you guys have, have always built your products on this model. Um, what's next? Yeah, so let me just reiterate some of the features that we built from the beginning, uh, just to make sure uh, everyone's aware. But, you know, one of the important ones was um, a remote hardware dashboard that you're able to monitor the health and wellness of all of your client system um, with full remote capabilities to say recycle power, monitor temperatures of readers, maybe it's on an exterior door and you're concerned about that. Um, we're seeing more and more adoption and demand for uh, unlocks and guest passes, which we built from the beginning, of course. And um, as more people move out of state or their office changes to, um, you know, remote, uh, remote, work faith, uh, remote workforce and hybrid office models, um, you know, we're seeing uh, lots of adoption for cloud-based systems such as OpenPath. Um, and then, of course, to just reiterate our video reader, um, because it has the ability to tie into any video partner out there and um, build an integration moving forward, you know, having the verification of the access event available right at your phone is really powerful. So that's uh, what we're excited about. Um, what about you guys, Chris? I think uh, for, from, from our perspective, we're always, you know, I'm kind of kicking a dead horse, but we're always looking at the latest and greatest. And we're going to look at what's um, the best product for the application. And so I think that's really listening to our customers. I think it's also having an open line of communication. I think Devin mentioned, you know, uh, one of the things that they're always taking feedback from use cases and understanding what, um, what the customer's experiences are, what their desires are. And really we, we do a lot of working sessions with our vendor partners to understand um, what the customer is looking for, what kind of new challenges, and especially with the COVID environment, 
I think as needs evolve and, and the environments evolve and the customer evolves with, with their growth and scaling, we look at solutions that can also um, do that with us and with the customer so we can, to, can stay with them um, for, for a longer period of time uh, and hopefully they value our partnership. So I think from our perspective, um, I, we're looking at a lot of new SaaS type technology where um, we have that ability to grow and scale. So I think it's an excellent point along the lines of um, creating that customer environment experience, but also scalability. With a, you can do that with a lot with the um, Schlage lines. You know, we use a lot of Schlage and Force Open Path. So um, th- those are on our on our radar or slash we're using them. I'll throw it over to Daniel. I've been quiet over there. Yeah. So I mean, so from from our from our angle in the remote guarding sector. This security as a service model is really uh, like Devin had mentioned earlier. You know, it, it's been it's been the perimeter, and that perimeter is extending because technologies are becoming available, and they've been available, but they just haven't been real cost effective. And so, as these technologies are getting better and better and better, uh, the the perimeters are extending. Whether that's using radar or or the drone technology, a lot of stuff that was military grade that's now coming down the consumer level. Uh, cost cost pro- prohibitive stuff that, that we can now get our hands on and get these into the customer's hands and get these perimeters widened out. But then, like Dem also mentioned, it's coming in. So we're replacing a lot of these traditional old school alarm systems that are that are now going away. And video is now covering inside and outside. And and so we're we're just able to we're able to encompass the whole thing from a security as a service model in this remote guarding sector. Yeah, I've certainly enjoyed uh, the guest passes when I go to Chris's house now. He just sends me a code on my phone. I get to walk into the house whenever I want. Uh, unfortunately, he has 20 cameras hanging up, so they catch my every move. Um, last question here that I have um, gives us a little more personal. Um, it's going to allow the audience to, to know you a little better. Um, Chris, I'm going to start this question with you. Um, you know, we were talking a few weeks ago and you were telling me about how you personally have had to change and innovate yourself um, over your career in this industry. So, um, you know, with that, tell us how you've had to innovate in terms of your product knowledge, your skill sets to keep up uh, with this industry. Well, I mean, as you can tell, I've been in the industry for many, many, many years. Um, but no, I, I think uh, when I first started, um, you know, it was, there was more of an emphasis on analog technologies, um, and having a strong knowledge base when it came to electrical components and, and, and infrastructure and, and building material, all that kind of stuff. Now it seems like the focus is more so on having uh, a working knowledge of IT networking, Internet of Things, IoT, um, even some you know most basic sensors nowadays will have some sort of smart feature or edge computing, right? And so when we talk about uh, you know the conversations above, we look at a lot of the, uh, the the sensors and solutions, you know, those all it comes down to connectivity and power, and and then the feature sets are all programmed in the software and things like that. So I think you know I've personally had to change by uh, trying to teach myself and actually learn from a lot of the subject matter experts. Very fortunate at Securitas, we have some brilliant people, uh, multifaceted that I can learn from them, and and have had to really. Um, focus and learn on the, the IT networking side and, and, and kind of bridge the gap from the analog into the new, the new era. So that's, that's, I guess that's a little bit of a personal story. Uh, Daniel, uh, how about you? You, you've been around uh, a while in this industry. How have you evolved uh, personally? Yeah, I, I think uh, similar to Chris, uh, you know, coming from the video world and, and things being analog and, and doing remote guarding or, or really just remote video monitoring over ISDN phone lines before Internet was really even widely available uh, and, and just adapting to technology, especially the software side, which, you know, I can kind of move back and forth with the way video is going, but the software side where all the the AI analytics and a lot of things that are that are they're pretty much way above my head that are kind of taking over our remote guarding industry uh, from that kind of Silicon Valley software side of things that that our industry has just never really been a part of and uh, and it's exciting to see us go in that direction 
Uh, and so I, I do like the future. Um, and it's just, it's just a, uh, a, a exciting time for, for remote guarding and, and what we're doing. So. Awesome. Uh, and same question over to you. Hey, thanks. Um, so I'm going to go way back. So uh, in college, I actually started off uh, in the school of engineering, did that for a couple of years, and then later decided to get my degree, degree in international relations. And looking back, I'm really thankful that I had um, both experiences, um, because while they are very, uh, you know, they're different uh, and contrast greatly, um, it's been really helpful later in life. So you know, right out of college, I got a role actually in, in a pricing uh, role where I was focused on numbers and profits and margin and had to interact with a lot of finance and analyst teams. And then I had to shift over into a sales role where I had to focus on my presentation skills to convey technical details about different products. And then even um, more recent here at Open Path, uh, when I came on board and we were just launching a brand new channel program, you know, I had to dive in and research different, uh, all the different software programs that would help make uh, all of our channel partners experience seamless in their business relationship uh, with us. So for me, learning is what keeps us young and curious and excited to explore all that could be in the future. And uh, it's really exciting and inspiring. So Devin, what about you? What's your story? Sure, sure. Yeah. So uh, prior to the Legion, I've uh, been in the Legion for about eight years now, uh, hard to believe. But uh, prior to that was at Raytheon, so defense industry. And uh, I'd say that and be interested to see if our audience agrees. But I think this is actually a much kinder industry uh, to take part in and to be a part of. Uh, really been you know, blessed to be able to do work with so many different uh, partnerships throughout my career at Legion. Uh, and ultimately, I recognized that uh, the skill sets, uh, not so much product related, um, but more the skill set of leadership and, and have had the, you know, lucky to work for some very good leaders um, in my past and learning from them just the, the genuineness that it takes to really care about your people. Uh, I think in the last two years, right, that's been emphasized at, at everyone's companies even more so. Um, but you've got to be genuine, right? You've got to be genuine and, and really care about um, the people that you're working with. Um, how to lead through that, you know, more carrot, less stick, uh, you know, coming from defense to, uh, to a legion. And uh, that's been a huge positive. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and I think, yeah, hopefully others would agree here that uh, the best part of, you know, a, a nice partnership call is when everyone's aligned to a goal. They recognize, you know, what it is we're trying to achieve um, and that there's, you know, mutual success here. And I think that, you know, our industry uh, bleeds that left and right, right? It's really that mutual success that we can all drive together. And so that's been, uh, you know, a lot of fun to, to continue to learn and hone that skill set. Yeah, it's uh, definitely fun uh, learning something new every day, uh, keeping up with uh, the needs of the industry and really the needs of our clients. So yeah, I think we actually have time for our bonus question here. Um, so again, let's keep this one fairly quick. So one thing a piece, um, but uh, Devin, you're going to lead this one off looking at the future of the industry. You know, what is a change or, or something that the industry is driving to uh, that you see over the next five years? Yeah, I am. I'm very optimistic. I think we are at a turning point where, you know, it used to be that uh, there is an infinite number of standards and things weren't working well together. I think we're at this pivotal moment that we're going to see standards emerge and we're going to see, you know, as the industry learn uh, how to work together and how to drive towards interoperability. And uh, I'm, I'm big on that and uh, certainly optimistic that the next five years are going to bring some pretty rapid change in that department. And what do you see? Yeah, you know, a lot remains unclear about uh, the future of the office space and what that will look like in 2022 and beyond. Um, but, you know, one thing that kind of stands out in my mind is the, is the need for flexibility uh, and being able to adapt to the ever-changing needs uh, as they change in the upcoming years. So whether it's, you know, cloud-based or touchless that are growing in popularity, um, uh, regardless, the landscape of security is going to look a lot different than it did in 2019 and solutions that allow you to monitor your building and secure your operations, keep your people safe and um, a le a leverage advanced technology such as video analytics and AI will continue to prevail. All right, uh, Chris. I, I hate to say it, but uh, I'd say uh, Devin and uh, Ann have pretty much covered it for me. <laughs> I think you're looking at a lot more advanced edge computing um, and AI analytics. Those things are going to continue to grow and develop. 
Um, a lot of the smart sensors, I think there's going to be, I think Devin, you touched on it um, really great. There's going to be a convergence um, uh, with the interoperability between systems, you know, whether or not that's building management and, and some other things. I think that, um, you know, I think that's going to continue to be something. And then, you know, also just the security industry in general, we looked at it from kind of being the guard skates gun model. And now it's sort of, you know, it's a, it's a different sort of industry where you have a lot of different professionals and in influencing it. So I think uh, you also see that, that the dynamic change as well, uh, continue to change. Daniel, we'll uh, bring this last question home with you. Yeah, I think that the, uh, the, the biggest change, which, I mean, we're already seeing it, but it's the, the video is everywhere. Uh, and like I was mentioning earlier, indoors, out, outdoors, I think that in the security industry, video is going to uh, be the top dog from from monitoring to just everything that, that someone's trying to protect their site, home, uh, all of the above. It's it, video is going to it's going to be uh, everywhere. Uh, perfect. So, you know, what I heard from from Ann that I want to close this with is, is the security landscape is, is looking for flexibility and adaptability. Um, and I think we all touched on that um, in part of our answers. Um, you know, for me, our, our outlook is, is promising and it's very exciting time to be a part of the industry. I want to thank our team of panelists today. Uh, again, Ann, Chris, Daniel, Devin, thank you all for your time today. Um, thank you to, for our viewers for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time on Security Matters.